Welcome to Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. Amen. Is there anybody worshiping with us for the very first time? Today is your first time with us. Would you please lift your hand, wave it from side to side like you do care. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here? Well, anybody watching online, welcome. Welcome to your father's house. Welcome to Living Destiny Church. Amen. I encourage you guys, people are looking for a place. People are looking for a place to worship. People are looking for a place where they'll be raised up in the admonition of the Word of God. So invite somebody. Amen. You know, just go ahead and talk about, about your church and about how God is moving in your life. And then invite them to your Father's house. Amen. Amen. Are you being blessed in living destiny? Amen. Are you growing in living destiny? Amen. How's your fasting going? <laughs> fasting is going. Fasting is happening. Hallelujah. <laughs> the fast is happening. Amen. And I pray that you are you are you are pressing in stronger and stronger. You are getting better and better. Amen. It is it is it is not um, a sprint. It is a journey with God and and with God what normally happens is not it's not so much the, the destination, but the journey that he takes you through. Okay, because, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, it's, it's, um, we are so fixated on the destination that we stress ourselves to get there. And then when we get there, because that was not the intention of God to be focused on the destination, he at will changes your destination then we get upset again right it's like god but you but you you said i should go here and then as soon as we get there he's like well the journey was more important than the destination so now let's go here you're like no 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 i'm ready to park okay i'm ready to settle down and and, and enjoy this place and god is like no 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 the journey is more important. So allow the journey and the process of God to take you. Otherwise, you are going to fast forward yourself just to get to the destination. And once you get there, you realize that mm, I got here too quick because the party hasn't started yet. And then you'll be waiting in your car, waiting five years for the party to start because you couldn't wait to hook yourself up. Somebody say amen. Well, today I want to... Um, in preparing, I want to speak to something um, concerning the manifestation of God in your life. 2024 is a year of the manifested hand of God. And I've said many times and I'm excited about seeing God use each and every one of you to manifest his glory, to manifest his power, to manifest his hand in this earth. Amen. And, and uh, what's exciting is that I want to en encourage you that there is something that you are supposed to birth. There is something that you are supposed to birth. And, and it's, it's important that you, you, you allow the manifestation of God to prepare you so that you can birth it and birth it right. Somebody say amen. And that whatever God has put inside of you, whether it's a song, uh, whether it's a book, uh, whether it's a business, it's a ministry, whatever that God has put inside of you, uh, let him prepare you uh, so that the manifestation is of him and the manifestation is pure. Somebody say, Amen. I have not eaten tonight. That's why I am preaching very gently. Hallelujah. I have no broken yet, and so <laughs> you take your time and you count your breath. Hallelujah. Now, God wants to birth something in you. Do you believe that? You sound like you don't want to birth it. God wants to birth something in you. Somebody say amen. amen. God wants to birth something in you. And so I'm going to just go, go ahead and I, I actually, I began this, this on the first Sunday, how manifestation works. Do you guys remember? If you're a student, can I see your notes? How does God manifest? How does the manifestation of God work? I, it starts with one person. That's step number one. And then number two, 
everybody else catches on, right? And so God begins with one, and, and, and sometimes you begin with a few people, but it's a very limited number, right? He begins with a few, and then as it begins to grow and becomes clear, um, then God will bring other people to catch on. Both steps are important, right? There must be a spark before the fire, um, but if the, if, the, if the fire stops with a spark, then it doesn't go anywhere, right? And so the spark ignites the fire, and then the other logs come in to keep the fire burning so that it goes from glory to glory. It goes from step to step. And so for whatever God is calling you to birth this year, whatever God is calling to birth out of your life, I want to speak to the processing of the one. I want to speak to the processing of the one. If there's one thing that I believe that I am graced for, that I have the grace of God, is to understand and to teach this process of God preparing you from one place to another. Because so many people either are lagging behind and God has to pull you and say, let's go. Or people have already gone ahead and built and built things that God did not instruct them to build. You understand? Understanding the process, understanding what it takes for the one to hear the call to, uh, to be processed and to manifest it is very, very important. Somebody say amen. God has put something inside of you, and like every human being, you probably went ahead of God and tried it yourself, and it didn't work, and so you backtrack and say, okay, God, I'm right. okay, okay, God, okay, okay, now, 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 I'm really going to listen, <laughs> and now I'm not going to do it my way, I'm going to do it your way, so now God, teach me. Somebody say hallelujah. The processing that God takes you through and you've, you've heard this before, is, is very much like the crushing of the grapes to make fine wine. Are you sure you want to manifest the hand of God? Okay, All right, so let's go. When God is calling you, and for the sake of discussion, to be the point of contact, or the other word is, or the other phrase is, to be the entry point of his glory in the earth. There is a different level of demand that is put upon you in order to be the door through which the hand of the Lord is manifest in the earth. Some people are okay enjoying the fruit of the manifestation. But some of us are crying out and saying, Lord God, whatever you want to manifest in the earth, I want you to use me as a vessel to release your glory upon the earth. The qualifications are not the same, right? Um, the one who eats and the one who cooks the food have a different way of thinking and processing things. You see what I'm saying? The one who comes to eat, just make sure that they have a fork and knife and they're ready to go. That's all they need. But the one that is is it's about to manifest that wonderful meal begins to sometimes prepare weeks ahead and days ahead and knows how to turn the fire up and the fire down, when to stare. There's a different process. Here. And I'm speaking to you because you have said you want to manifest the glory of God as one that is going to be a point of entry, a birthing channel for the glory of God and for the hand of the Lord in your life in your family, in your church, in your neighborhood, and onto the ends of the earth. Somebody say hallelujah. You are saying that, Lord God, I want you to do something extraordinary in my life. And God definitely says that I sought for one to stand in the gap. I found no one, therefore I destroyed the city, right? So God is looking for intercessors. God is looking for a point of entry in order to manifest his glory in the earth. Somebody say amen. Does your Bible say that God is spirit? Is God spirit? Okay, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, the earth was made for humans, right? And so for manifestation to take place, um, there is a need of an earthly body. 
That's why demons need a body through which to manifest. Even when Jesus cast out the demon, they didn't say just let us flow. They said cast us out into the pigs. They need a form of natural permission in order to be upon the earth. You understand that? And so, because of the, because of the nature of that law, uh, God did not come into the earth and just say, you know, I am wind, I am God, behold, I am God, bow down. No, he came in the form of man because that is what authorizes you to walk upon the earth. Respect your body. Because the moment your body is no longer functioning, you are no longer permitted here. <laughs> and so don't, don't be so spiritual, you ignore taking care of this body because you are three parts, right? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Any one of those fail and you cease to be human. And so the physical presence and authorization uh, comes uh, from, from, from a human that is upon the face of the earth. That is the essence of prayer. Um, that God can just from heaven release beams of fire to destroy all wickedness. God, by his power, can just move and stop everything. Um, but he says, I need you to pray. And when you pray, that is the point of agreement um, that allows me to be present in the earth. If you don't pray, I cannot move. Let me phrase it really. It's not I cannot move, I will not move. Because God will not violate the laws of the land. That's how we say that God will never make it rain. Right? Money. God, just, just, just if God gets me on some gold dust, it goes, no, you ain't going to work. It will be a violation of natural law. God will become a counterfeit. Because now he is making dollar bills without the permission of the government. You understand? And so those laws, God has allowed himself to be bound by them. And he said that in order for me to manifest my hand in this earth, I need someone to cry out. I need someone to stand in the gap. I need someone to say, Lord, use me. And then the word will come and the revelation will come and the power will come. And then you go forth and manifest it in the earth. The, the question now lies, are you ready to bear the cost of being the point of entry. Call it the tip of the spear. Right? The, the encounter that the one, the one who is called faces is different from what happens with the ones that come after. For your family, are you willing to be the point of entry that manifests the glory of God? There is a cost associated with that. And I'm not going to go into all the different teachings of the cost, but I, 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 I want to share this with you. Let's go to Genesis 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. Hallelujah. We want to manifest the hand of the Lord. And it's going to take the, 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 the commitment to see God do that for it to work. Amen. Genesis chapter 12. You guys don't sound excited anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know about this, Pastor. At this point of entry, I don't know, man. It's kind of, kind of like, sounds like lots of attacks. Remember, it is good. Amen. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. He will keep you. He says that I've made you an iron pillar, a bronze wall. You will stand against these people and, and they will not stand against you. So go ahead and embrace what God is calling you to. Genesis 12 verse 3. I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 when he departed from Haran. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. 
Exodus chapter 4, verse number 10. Exodus chapter 4, verse number 10. Okay. Bible says, Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my God, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who made man's mouth? Who and who? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you, what you shall say. But Moses said, O oh my Lord, please, I beg now, send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. Somebody say amen. One last scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm glad you are here tonight, amen. Your, 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 your life will not be the same. First Kings chapter 18, verse number 22. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophet are 450. And that is not true. Somebody say amen. Because... Um, Obadiah had already told him the hundred prophets in the land that are kept in the cave. But you know, but when you want to go on a suicide mission, when you want to play hero ball, that's what happens. Ain't nobody praying like me. I'm the only one prophet in the land, you know. I'm seeing things that nobody bro, stop it. God is bigger than that. Hallelujah. God is bigger than that. But I, I, I went through those scriptures because we see, we see that uh, the, very first, the, the very first one was who? Was Abraham, right? Abraham was supposed to go by himself, bring his family. Lot was not permitted, but he brought Lot. Moses, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I can, God, I can, I can. Can you, okay, send somebody with me. <laughs> somebody say hallelujah. Elijah in the cave, it's only me. Or Mount Campbell, it's only me. But it is not only you, right? But, but there is a human tendency, and this is what I want to encourage you tonight. There's a human tendency to bring along others as the Lord is processing. No one wants to suffer alone. No. At least, if somebody is there, even if all they are doing is watching me, at least somebody is keeping me company as I suffer. You, you understand? They may not be able to help me, but their presence alone makes me feel like it's, 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 it's somebody is there. Um, but I want to submit to you tonight that when God is processing you, um, there is need that he separates you. If you are going to manifest the hand of the Lord in this life, I want you to get comfortable with being alone in his presence. The manifestation will happen through you with people. That one is, 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 is undeniable, right? Don't forsake yourselves from gathering together. And Jesus went from himself to his disciples. So the propagation of the anointing and the power and the word is going to take people. So you can't do it by yourself. Um, but when it comes to receiving the call and the processing and God preparing you in order for him to release the message into your life is going to take you being isolated. So stop bringing everybody with you. Stop bringing everybody with you as if, you know, the more people come, uh, then, 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 then the, the better. It is not so. When it comes to the manifestation and God releasing his word to you, he needs it to be potent. The more people you have, the more dilute the Kool-Aid. God needs it to be potent. That's why he called Moses up to the mountain by himself. 
and release the word into him. Jesus said, I, I, I can summon a legion of angels and we can take care of this right now. Uh, but he said, no, no, no. He stood there on the cross by himself. Jacob, I mean, um, Joseph tried to make connections. At the end of the day, he had to go through this process by himself. I'm not talking about just um, ignoring people. You, uh, I hope you catch what I'm saying. It's not that I don't have my accountability praying for me. It's, a, it's not that I isolate myself. The thing is, and, and I, I feel like I need to describe this process. This is the process, right? I, I, am, I, I, am, I am in my time with God. God speaks to me and God is processing me. And then, and then, okay, in Jesus' name, I come among people. Hallelujah, brother. How are you doing? God bless you, sister. How are you doing? God is blessing you. And, and you don't want to go home. Because you know, you, know, you know when you go home, God's going to catch you. And so you try to stay around as long as you can. You, know, you want to go for dinner. You want to go for tea. You want to hang around everybody else. Because you know the moment you enter into that house, bam. God says, come on, not again. <laughs> God is about to tear you up. Right? And so I'm talking about a life where, yes, you are with people. And God is using people to encourage you. But that room. That God is taking you into, nobody can come with you. The processing that happens there requires a singular focus, a singular intensity, a singular purpose, and that other people are just going to mess up. So when God isolates you, understand that he's trying to birth something inside of you. The, the, the annoying part of it is that he doesn't tell you what. At least if he asks me permission as to what time of the year, what time of the month, what time of the week he intends, and what he's doing, I may give him permission and say, God, you know, I like your project. I like what you are doing, so I'm interested. But he doesn't say anything. He just Starts. Well, you prayed and said, God, manifest your hand in my life. And it's okay. And then he starts. And then he starts. Am I birthing a book? Am I birthing a ministry? Am I birthing a business? You don't know. And then sometimes he will leave you alone. Oh, it's over. And then two and a half days and, and three minutes later, he calls you back in. You're like, oh, I thought this was over. And then he starts over again. And in, at first it was for two weeks. Now it's for a month. Then it's for two days. You're like, bro, what you do? Can I, can I get with your program? Can you submit your itinerary so I know when you're going to be snapping on me? But that is the processing of God. I invite you to be comfortable with that process. Because if God is going to manifest his hand in your life, it will not be on your schedule. It will not be based on your understanding. It will be based on what he wants to do and how he wants to do it and what shape and form he wants it to take. Somebody say hallelujah. God had to instruct me quickly. And I, I believe this applies to many areas of our lives. The moment I got a revelation in my heart, I want to talk about it. The Bible study. Oh my God. Hey, you, you, Titus, man. This morning when I was praying, Titus was my um, college roommate. Yeah, you know what God was saying? And the one time God says, hush. It is still a seedling. It is not grown yet. You're talking too much. It says, wait. For that seedling to grow, keep feeding it, keep feeding, and then it, be, it will become a tree. <clears throat> when it becomes a tree, you still don't cut the tree down. It is the fruit of the tree that people partake of. Excuse me. <coughs> it is the fruit of the tree that people partake of. If you give them the seedling, they trample over it and it's done. You don't even know what kind of fruit it is. Just, oh, I got this revelation. Keep it to yourself. 
Keep it to your soul. Hush your Bible study. It is good, man. God is teaching me amazing things. I can't wait. I'm excited. Okay, good, good. Then you go back. But you don't come and broadcast. You understand? Do you know the power of this process? People will start benefiting from the fruit of the revelation without you telling them, I'm about to give you this. You understand? The the uh, mango tree right that's not going around announcing i'll give you a fruit i'll give you fruit take my leaf it is fruit no 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 when the fruit comes people start partaking of it when it is time you don't have to force it people will start people say that, and the birds will flock Instead of trying to announce what God is doing, huh? I'm about to bear mango fruit. Huh? Everybody come up. No, 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 no. You just, you just stay where you are. Abide with God. Let him grow you. And when the fruit comes, the demand for it will come. Someone say hallelujah. God wants you to be able to stay in his presence. God wants you to abide in his presence. In the same way, when God is tearing you up, when God is tearing you up, stop advertising it. Father, I love you. Ooh, I beat you up. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I didn't sign up for this. He's messing with my flow. Oh, Jesus. Oh, child, man, the devil is sure is busy. I mean, God is, uh, uh, the devil is attacking me. And I, I know God is doing something, but he's always speaking. What do you want us to do for you? <laughs> Having told us all that you are going through, how can we help? We cannot help you. It is, you are not telling me this for prayer because I was praying for you already. So it's not like you are asking for a different kind of prayer. You just want to talk. But that dilutes it. I don't know how biblical this is, but my, my friends and I back home used to say, talking dilutes the anointing. You understand? Because when, when, it's, when it's inside, it's supposed to be packed up and potent. At the right time, a word fitly spoken, right? It's like apples of gold in settings of silver. It is, it, it, is, it is spoken. It is potent. So it carries weight. But when you blah, 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 you done diluted its power already. Don't tell me I'm lying. That the person in your life that talks a lot. You have come up with a mechanism to ignore them. Tell me that's not true. Because you know that after, they are, after you ignore them and you pick up 30 minutes later, they are still talking. When you blah, 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 your words are not potent. And so they don't carry power. In the board meeting, in, on the job, right? When the person who doesn't talk Begins to talk. Everybody goes, you got something to say? We never hear you speak. You understand? There is power in the potency. There is power in the processing. Stop bringing everybody around into the processing of God. God wants to lash you and lash you by himself. God wants to do surgery on you and cut you up by himself. Somebody say hallelujah. Do you still want to manifest this hand in the earth? Yes. I, I know you do. I know you do. Otherwise, you will not be here tonight. You are here because you were excited about it. And God is ready to do that. So when God is processing you, your processing, thank you, thank you. Your processing is going to be private. You know why it must be private? Because when God is processing you, he also shows off your nakedness. So it cannot be a public show. 
when God is working on you and making you manifest his glory, he tells you things that you're like, God, shh, God, quiet. You don't want people to hear. Things you don't want people to partake of. So in his mercy, he will take care of it right here. It is us who won't shut our mouth. Then we start talking out here. God is doing a processing of your heart and the molding of your spirit. That your BFF, your forever friend, your husband, your wife, your child, your pastor cannot save you from. Somebody say hallelujah. I want to see smiles. I want to see excitement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when people come along, they rather frustrate the hand of God. When people come, it, it, was, it was after Lot left Abraham that God says, look and see what I will do in your life. So God in your processing, God in preparing you to manifest his hand in the earth will isolate you. Okay, I'll share this. Even in marriage, God, when God began to do it, I was like, hey, God, no, 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 no. See, it makes no sense that you say covenant and then you are doing this to me. Even in marriage, God began to ask me, give up your wife for me. Ah, them that God has put together, let no one put asunder. Let not even God. <laughs> I'm not going to let God <laughs> put us asunder. You say we are one, and so we are one. <laughs> what is this? What is this, huh? You, you, say, you say covenant, now you the same God. Abraham gets a son. Thank you, Lord. Now give it up. What, what kind of Indian giving is this? Indian giver, somebody who gives and takes back. Yeah. <laughs> right? But that is the very nature of God that you're going to say, surrender her to me. I'm like, God, I'm the husband. Surrender her to me. To the point where my loyalty to God is independent of her. My commitment to God is independent from her. And no matter what she says or does, whether favorable or unfavorable to me, and does not change my affiliation with God. Because if we, are, if, if we go into the space together, then I can be like Adam. And I can say, God, the woman you gave me. So God had to purify it and say, you come by yourself. When you look around and there's no one to blame, you look at yourself. You know how crazy I am about my wife. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys answered that too quickly. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We know, we know, we know. Yes. There was my wife. <laughs> and so... In my heart, I had to learn what I've been teaching you. God, family, for church. I cannot put my wife above my God. So when God is separating me and, and, and processing me and breaking me, I don't say, wife, why don't you bail me out? Wife, why don't you... He can't. She can't. So I'm telling you that even at the, at, the, at the highest level of covenant, God still demands an independent heart that seeks him. 
above everything else. Because if you come in together and something does not work, you will find someone And there's something about him manifesting his hand in the earth. He doesn't have time for, he did it, she did it, he made me. Listen, we are, we, listen, we are producing something. We are birthing something. Now is not the time to say who did what. We got to know who is in charge, who is responsible. Let's go. So God is coming after your heart. He's coming after you to see if you are willing to give up that which is dearest to you. See, when, when I preach these things, I'm not talking about, oh, nice English verbose. No, I'm talking about give up that which is dearest to you. If your wife is no longer with you, if your husband is not with you, if your children are not with you, would you still serve me the same way you would if they were? And even if... When they are with you, would you let their influence or their presence take away from your obedience to me? Because we, we enjoy their presence. We enjoy the fellowship. And when God says, let's pray. Okay, my son, let's go pray. My daughter, let's go pray. But God, I'm having family time. I'm bonding with my friends. Right? We give that as a, and that in our ears sounds like a good reason. Lord, I, I'm being a good example for them. I'm trying to encourage them. Right? I remember when, when, when I was a youth pastor, and uh, whilst we are having service in the church, then I'll see some bunch of youth sitting outside the sanctuary on the wall, and I'll see one person with them, all of a sudden, somebody else will go, then they are leaving the sanctuary to go. One person has decided that they are going through emotional trouble. And so they are sitting down, and then people are coming to comfort them. I say, hello, hey, my friend, get inside the house. The tendency is to just, but I can't pray because I was ministering to my friend. I can't obey you, God, and show up for my processing because I had to take care of my mother or my father or my brother or my sister or my husband or my wife. So we use other people as an excuse to not be processed by God. God is not saying don't love them. That is not it. But then it's, he's, se he's seeking after your heart. You understand? And so he knows what's inside your heart. He knows what you are using as a cover-up to not be processed in order to manifest his glory in the earth. So of us, we use work. We work and work and work and work triple over time, fourple over time. We do all of that because you don't want to enter into that place. Some of us, you sleep. You, 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 you have your sleep at night and then your, your, your morning nap, afternoon nap, Sometimes on the job, you take your pre-nap. You are always trying to find, instead of God says, wake up, let us pray. But God, I have to sleep. I have work tomorrow. You hear me? Some of us use shopping. When God tears you up and breaks you up, you feel empty. Anybody realize that? <laughs> After God is done with you, you feel like you don't even know where your legs are. <laughs> like you're just walking. So you want to go do something that will satisfy the soul. <laughs> and so you go spend money. Some of you use food. Food. After God has convicted you, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. He loves me. You are trying to numb the pain of the processing. I want to invite you to that place that you say, Lord God, by myself, you will process me. You cannot free people until you are free of people. You wouldn't, yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. The, the, the most you can say is that, you know what, there's something I'm working on right now. I'm busy with this right now. I still like you as a friend, but we'll talk later. But, I mean, as you were saying, that the very first thing that came to mind, that was my secondary thought. The primary thought is that somebody who has been through the processing understands that. And if you have not been through that, I can hang with you. More reason why I got to separate from you. <laughs> because you don't understand the cost of the anointing. It's like, it's, it's, it's like if, I, if I call someone right now, yo, uh, Moses, Charlie, how, how you doing? Charlie, you know what? I'm going on waiting. I'll be, I know I can't answer my call for a while. Bet. I'll see you when you get back. But the ones that give you attitude, no, those are the ones that want to pull you back down. And so they, they may not be a bad person, but guess what? They just don't understand, and they just don't qualify to go to the next level with you. And so you have to be okay with, they are not coming with me. It's okay to go into that chamber, that transformation chamber, by myself, and let God do his work with me. Remember times where I'm, 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 everybody, yeah, let's go eat. So we are all going in droves. I know we are. We are excited about eating, right? And then God says, it's time to pray. So whilst people are going, I take an exit. Go find a fountain. Go under a stair somewhere or a parking lot. Whilst people are eating, why can't I eat some? God is separating you. The things, oh, movie night, you, 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 you lose interest. That is part of the thing. Uh, now I'm kind of like preaching my book, but you lose interest in that which you desired before. Your appetite changes. You used to long for just fun time with your friends, um, but now even when you are with them, you look disconnected. You feel disconnected. You realize that I don't belong here. Um, my, my spirit is feeling something else, but my body is here. And so there's a disconnect. Respond to that. God wants to manifest his hand in your life. He wants to do something amazing in you. And, and, and you have to be willing to say, it's okay for me to be here by myself. Because if you're not, if you're not free of people, you can't free people. That was the problem of Saul. Saul needed people's approval. And I think we prayed about it. When was it? The day before? Or was it today? People pleasing. Right? Double-edged sword. People pleasing and being afraid of man. The fear of man and people pleasing are the same coin. Just different sides. So you will always seek to please people. I believe God says that we should, we should, we should... Um, uh, take that step and, and, and move that thing over to the corner. But are you sure? I'm not. I, I don't think we should do that. Well, you know what? When two shall agree upon a thing, <laughs> a case shall be established. And so you agree with them and change the plan of God. How many times have we not done that? God tells you one thing, you share with somebody, they say, I don't think so. Yeah, you say, well, I agree with you. I don't think so. <laughs> And you no longer obey the instruction of the Lord, and you have now edited it because you have now partnered with something or somebody else. I'm talking about God taking you to a higher place. To manifest His glory, yes, it will be through people. The fire will be carried by other people. Um, but the first encounter is going to be one of a tearing up, one that you have to stand by yourself. The emphasis of this message today is not that you don't know that God will do that. The thing is, I want you to be okay. Don't complain about God tearing you up. And don't go around announcing uh, what God is tearing you up about until he is done. When he's done, they ask you, so where have you been? You say, do you have time? 
take a chair. <laughs> Let me tell you what God has been doing. But whilst God is doing it, it's not the time to be whining and complaining and God is doing this. People can help you and, 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 and God is like, why are you revealing our bedroom secrets? You're just yapping around. Right, like there is nothing special anymore. The curtain is open. What happened to your bedroom is what happens outside. God is not special. Everything is just everywhere. God is preparing you to birth his glory. There's something inside of you. That's why you are here, living destiny. No, you come here, either, either the seed is already there or God just, bram, he plants it. You are developing something. You are pregnant with something. You are pregnant with the seed of God's word. And God says, there is something inside of you. And God will take you into that inner chamber and begin to process you. Get comfortable with it. Don't bring lot. Uh, don't bring lot cost, um, lot cost Abraham problems. Aaron, the one who was supposed to help him, cause problem, a golden calf. Listen, you are bringing people with you that you think by their experience are going to help you. And God is saying, oh. It's like when you, when you want to hang with somebody and they bring somebody and you are like. <laughs> Why are they here? <laughs> it's like, it's awkward. That's what happens when God is processing you and you are bringing people that are not invited to your processing party. It's just awkward. And you don't hear what you need to hear. And because in the presence of a third person, I'm not going to tell you what I was going to tell you if we're by ourselves. Now I'm speaking general things and I'm speaking and then you think, oh, God says something. You just heard a little part of it because you were not willing to separate yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. Please stand up on your feet. Hey.